Good morning. Welcome to worship. Uh, this morning we are celebrating the Holy Trinity. Uh, so we're going to have some preludes that have to do with that. I'm going to play the first three and then Maria is going to play a few. Uh, to start us off this morning, I'm going to play uh, number 42 out of the, uh, the Worship and Praise songbook, the uh, purplish looking one. Uh, number 42, Glorify Thy Name. to the red hymnal, the ELW, uh, red or uh, cranberries it's sometimes called, uh, for the rest of the prelude. Uh, between Maria and myself, we're going to be starting at number 413 and then working our way backwards. Uh, so I'm going to start with number 413 here, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
Right now, I'm going to be doing one more here before I kick it over to Maria. That is number 412 in the red hymnal. Come join the dance of Trinity. Starting with 411, we all believe in one true God in the Red Book. Um, Cranberry.
to 410, um, All Glory Be to God on High. for today, which is um, going to be found in All Creation Sings. I'm not sure how many people have that. Um, it's number 948, and it's Womb of Life and Source of Being. So this is a tune that's maybe, perhaps not so familiar um, to, to con Kango's congregation. So I'm just going to play, um, play it instrumentally. <laughs> Maria, and thank you, Jonathan, for helping us center ourselves for worship for, for this time where we come together to worship Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity. This is the Sunday of the year where a majority of our congregations and churches throughout the world worship what we know as the Holy Trinity, which I say is a holy mystery. Sometimes we approach it as something to be solved or figured out. But I think after we learn from some of our readings, it is good to sit in the mystery and the love that comes out from the flowing of the Holy Trinity. Our, re, our um, reminder is we see this in Romans, which, which is up on the screen. Paul wrote this to the Roman people. 
um, after Jesus was put to death, risen, and ascended, he is writing to people all throughout his region, um, in a way, trying to explain the mystery of the Holy Trinity, but the one thing that I'm really caught up in in this reading is where he says, so then brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it isn't an obligation to ourselves to live our lives on the basis of selfishness. It really is, later on it says, we, we in the spirit cry, Abba, Father, Creator, the same spirit agrees with our spirit that we are God's children. And if God's children, we are also heirs. We are a family, a community. And that's one of the ways that we also understand the mystery of the Holy Spirit, that Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit are bound in a beautiful relationship with each other. And Paul is writing to us and to the Romans to say, hey, we are also bound by this. And like the Holy Trinity, we live with each other bound in this mystery of the Trinity's love poured out for all humanity. I think it's a wonderful way of looking at this reading from Romans. We will be having communion a little bit later. If you have some bread or wine, juice, crackers, you can get those ready. And um, we will also be including prayers that you might have. So if you do have prayers that come to mind throughout the service, you can just write them in, type them in on your device and through the chat feature, and we will include those. Uh, let's see, Brianna, do you want to advance the next screen? There we go. <laughs> Isn't that exciting? Hannah Elaine Bishop was born yesterday. And I received word from Ben and Sarah that everyone is doing well. So we have a new Hannah in the world, one of our sisters in Christ. And we give thanks for um, the health of this baby and Sarah and Ben and big sister, now big sister, Lydia. So I'm sure we'll be hearing more. And um, they asked that we share this good news with all of you. So we just give thanks to God for every human life, babies being born today, yesterday, and every day. And especially we welcome Hannah into the world. Thank you. We'll, we'll advance the screen and continue with worship on that good news. I've seen that, that for a very me. long time. Just keep repeating it. It's a great hymn. We continue with the confession and forgiveness today. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy, and everyone says, amen. amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. We act as though there isn't enough to share. We question your ways of mercy. We put our trust in false gods. We retreat into self-preserving practices rather than serve our neighbors in need. <clears throat> Turn us again to you. Kindle in our hearts a spirit of justice. Share with us the words of eternal life and nourish us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, Jesus the manna from heaven feeds and nourishes you. Jesus, the worker of miracles, grants more than enough. Jesus, the bread of life, is merciful and gracious. Jesus forgives and loves you into abundant life. Amen. Let us pray together. Holy Trinity, how are we to understand you? How are we to comprehend that you are one God, yet three gods? How are we to relate to your divinity? When we doubt, when we overanalyze, when we are certain, reveal yourself as you have since the beginning to the end of days. Word, breath, wisdom, grace love, song, mercy, justice, peace. Hold us, Holy Trinity, and teach us to pray. Amen. The gospel for today is from John's gospel, the third chapter, 
it's 1 through 17, not just verse 17, but it's a good verse too. Um, and within our reading today, we will hear one of the most, if not the most famous Bible passage that maybe you've heard, maybe you've seen, maybe you have memorized, John 3, 16, that God gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Now we're going to hear this, and it is within a much bigger context, which is so, so, so important. Context always matters in scripture. And Jesus is going to have a conversation with a, a rabbi, a Jewish leader. Um, Nicodemus is his name. Nicodemus has, is, is, has some certainty, but also some doubts and approaches Jesus alone, kind of in the cloak of night, where no one else can really see or hear this leader's questions and, um, and doubts even. So it's, it's a wonderful um, little look into this conversation between the wonderful man that we know of, Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader, and Jesus. Now, there was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came to speak to Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miracle, your miracles and signs are evidence that God is with you. Jesus replied to Nicodemus, I tell you the truth, unless you're born again, you can't see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. How can I, an old man, go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, oh, Nicodemus, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised, Nicodemus, when I say that you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants, and just as you can hear the wind, but you can't tell really where it comes from or where it's going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. How are these things possible, Jesus? Nicodemus asked. He replied, Jesus replied, you're a respected Jewish leader, and yet you don't understand these things, Nicodemus? I assure you, we tell you what we know and have seen, and yet you don't believe our testimony. But if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ever gone to heaven and returned, but the Son of Man has come down from heaven. And just as long ago, Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness to heal the people, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. For this is how God loves the world. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. God sent his Son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, grace and peace to you from Jesus, our Lord and Savior. I, I feel like I need to apologize to Nicodemus. I've been preaching on this passage and pastors all over the place. And when I think about some of the sermons that I have preached in years past, I feel like I've been really hard on Nicodemus, too hard on him for not understanding Jesus, too hard on him for not having faith, too hard for even having to approach Jesus in the dark of night, not having the courage to ask the questions in broad daylight when other people might see him asking. Because I really wanted to ask Nicodemus, how hard can it be? You had a private lesson with Jesus, the Son of God, and you still didn't get it, Mr. Nicodemus. 
And so if he was sitting here at my dining room table, or maybe in your homes, maybe we would all find it in our hearts to apologize to Nicodemus. Because he already believed that Jesus was the son of God or from God because he was doing all these miraculous signs, turning water to wine, giving sight to the blind, healing the sick. You know, there's a few of us maybe on this planet, note my sarcasm, that are walking on this planet today who struggle with Jesus' miracles and signs, not to mention the confusion that we have about being born again, you know, baptism, like who receives the Holy Spirit and when and what does that mean? Like there's an age that we, sometimes we put ages on baptism, like you have to be 13 or you have to be an infant, like you have to be old enough to understand. I think there's a lot of us who doubt. So true confession. And I wonder if I have permission to speak for all of us. We're no different than Nicodemus, stumbling and tripping in the dark, trying to keep up with Jesus, trying to understand you see, Nicodemus is our brother in faith. He's no different from me and perhaps you if you search your hearts. He only wanted to secure his faith. So who are we to criticize? You know, how many of us like Nicodemus want to secure our faith to be certain and yet also like Nicodemus may not have the courage to talk with each other about it or even to our spouse or your pastor. How many of us are so thankful to have eavesdropped into this conversation where we get to hear Nicodemus ask Jesus, how can this be, Jesus? How can we be born again? How can we be certain that our baptism secures us in faith, faith in you? Oh, the questions. And thanks be to God that Jesus didn't walk away from Nicodemus when the questions were asked. Instead, it was like an invitation for Jesus to talk to Nicodemus all the more. And Jesus didn't scold him or shame him or put him through the rigors of a confirmation test. <laughs> Remember all those? But instead, Jesus blessed Nicodemus with a gift from God. And that's where we do pick up on that very famous Bible passage where Jesus says, everyone who believes in me will have eternal life. For this is how God loves the world. Actually, it says loved, but it's in a past tense, the air is past tense, that keeps on going, right? And, and so it's for this is how God loves the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him shall not die, but have eternal life. And God sent his son into the world not to judge the world. We need to get over that. But to save the world through Jesus. This well-known famous Bible passage was born out of curiosity and confusion. Can we have an amen, church? Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> being born again, baptism, right? No matter what denomination, no matter what age, no matter where we are in our faith life or not, whether we can talk or not yet, baptism, having eternal life with Jesus is not a test. It may seem like a puzzle, but it's a puzzle that doesn't have to be solved. It isn't a battle between the denominational intellects. It is a pure gift from Jesus, the Son of God, who is on this Holy Trinity Sunday bound in a beautiful relationship with God the Father and the Holy Spirit, breathing and moving through every living person and thing on this planet. The mystery of the Holy Spirit birthing humanity every single day. And in that birth, humanity is born. You and I and every person is born every day anew, anew. 
with the Trinity bound to us by the Trinitarian promise. So I want to thank Nicodemus for stumbling in the darkness with Jesus. Because Nicodemus, if I could say to him sitting here, you give us courage to confess that we too stumble in doubt, or at least we get confused. And even though Nicodemus walked away from this conversation with Jesus, wondering still about what it is to be born again, he spoke up for Jesus when Jesus was arrested, when the world wanted to kill him, and Nicodemus said to Pilate and to others, Jesus deserves a trial. And later, Nicodemus even bargained for Jesus' body from the cross with Pontius Pilate that Jesus should be anointed and be buried in a tomb. Nicodemus had a lot of questions, and who here doesn't? And yet, maybe not the resounding pillar of faith that we might give, you know, attribute to Peter or Paul, the other disciples, but his is such a human faith a reminder that faith is not born out of dogma or doctrine. It isn't even necessarily born from baptism. No, it is a birth of faith that comes from baptism and being born into the restless wandering with questions rather than forthright affirmations. That Jesus is our Lord, that God is our creator, and that the Holy Spirit is living among us. And it is a great mystery. And if we learn anything from Nicodemus, it is that mystery is just to be worshipped and honored and also piques our curiosity, spurring us into conversation with each other about the holy mysteries of God and how we are bound by God's promise to one another, as St. Paul wrote in that letter to the Romans that we had for our reflection today. We are not bound by selfish wants and desires, but we are birthed again to be bound to each other by God's love. So I think what I'm trying to say is more than anything today and every Sunday and maybe every day, we worship and we wonder about so many things of faith because we are so captivated by God's grace, maybe because it's so unworldly and because love is so fragile, if not tenuous and elusive. And what we hear is this, God's affirmation through Jesus and promise that you are loved, that God loves this world so much that he sent his only son into the world and it's okay to question and believe even if we don't understand fully. And no matter what, God has always and will always hold us each and every day. Please pray with me. Lord, we give thanks for our brother Nicodemus and all our brothers and sisters. We are, if not anything, a beautiful, faith-curious community captivated by God's love made known in Jesus, whose Holy Spirit breathes in us today and breathes in every living person and thing today. Mysterious? Yes. Curious? Yes. Grateful? Yes. Amen. We sing our hymn of the day. Uh, it's number 948 out of the new All Creation Sings uh, hymnal. Uh, it's the tune that Maria played as the final prelude. And it's also a, a tune that uh, we have in the uh, With One Voice uh, hymnal, I believe, as an Advent hymn. Um, but a, uh, new hymn, a new hymn tune to many of us nonetheless. and source of being, home of every restless heart. In your arms the world's awakened, you have loved us from the start. We, your children, gather round you at the table you and laughter. 
with our human struggles, life of life and death of death. Risen Christ, come stand among us, send the Spirit by your breath. Mother, brother, Spirit, only Son, we would praise your name forever, one in three and three in one. We would share your life, your passion, share your word of world made new, ever singing, ever praising. Thank you, church, for preaching through that song. We continue with the prayers. Um, you'll hear me say, hear us, O God. The response today is, your mercy is great. And you may chat your prayers over as well. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. We pray, O God, for your holy church around the world. Revitalize and renew us that we may be reborn once again each day through the waters of baptism in the life-giving breath of your spirit. Lord, in your, hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We give you thanks for your power revealed to us in creation, for towering pine trees and oak trees, for nourishing rain and rumbling thunder. Teach us to care for your creation. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for the nations and all leaders that led by your spirit, they work until all of your children enjoy peace. We pray especially for the United States and our state of Wisconsin. We pray for Tanzania, El Salvador, Palestine, and Israel. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Liberating God, we remember today all the men and women who lost their lives in service to this country and for freedom everywhere. Comfort their families with resurrection hope. Embolden us all to work for justice and peace seeking to end violence in conflict around the globe. Protect those serving in the military, protect them and keep them away from any danger. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for healing for all those who suffer, especially victims and survivors of trauma or violence. Give respite to those living with PTSD, or any other mental health concern. Rescue anyone in despair, comfort the sick, the grieving, and accompany those dying. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for this worshiping community, Kingo Lutheran Church, and our partners of All People's Church and Hephatha Lutheran Church, that the splendor of your majesty and the holiness of your mystery be glorified through our worship and our relationships with one another. Forgive us where we have erred. Mend us and keep us united through the love that you have for all people. We give you thanks for the birth of Hannah Elaine, daughter of Sarah and Ben, now the little sister to Lydia. Bless their family in health, love, and joy. Hear us, O oh God. Our mercy. mercy is great. And from Nancy, we give thanks for the thanksgiving for the life of Barb Poppy. Or, sorry if I pronounce her name right. We'll, we'll just say Barb. Hear us, O oh God. 
your mercy is great. And from Danette, God, we ask for prayers of healing for Paul in his sprained ankle. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. And from Anna and Becca, prayers for their nephew, Tyler, <clears throat> who had emergency surgery yesterday. May he continue to heal and find some relief and watch over those caring for him and love him. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. And from Jackie, God, we give thanks for the good test results for her sister, Cindy. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Thank you, Sharp. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your abiding grace. And together we say a giant amen. Amen. As we continue with the offering, there are a variety of ways to give your offering. There's texting to give, giving online through the Kingo website or by mailing your check. Thank you for your faithful giving. Let us pray. Jesus, the bread of life, the author of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to a feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us, our gifts, our time, our talents, our money, and strengthen us in a community and prepare us as we share in this heavenly meal, Holy Communion. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of this world. Amen. And also just a reminder for the All People's Church, that's one of Kingo's partnership congregations. They have a very vital food pantry that feeds many people not very far away from here. There is a variety of needs. I'd say pick and choose. And um, also hygiene products are always, always um, welcome. A lot of times people forget that those items are so needed. Um, you can drop these items off outside the Olive Street office entrance at Kingo. There's a bin there. Or you can contact Walt Chasek if you would like your items to be picked up. And I believe Walt does those pickups and drop off at All Peoples on Tuesdays, if that's helpful for you. So thank you, Walt, for doing that. And thank you for keeping the pantry stocked. So we're going to transition to Holy Communion. We'll start by saying the great Thanksgiving, and then we'll bless our bread or crackers, juice and wine. Then we'll say the Lord's Prayer and then commune at that point in time. And if you can't keep all that straight, just listen to me. I'll give you the cues forward. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. So if you take your bread, roll, or cracker, we will hold those up and we will bless them. We remember in the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and broke it and gave thanks and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. So now if you get your juice or wine, again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together, church. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses <clears throat> as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set our tables with more than enough for all Come to the Feast of Abundant Life, Church. And you can get your bread. Take and eat. The body of Christ is given for you. The body of Christ is given for you. The body of Christ is given for you. Amen.
sisters and brothers in Christ, the blood of Christ is poured out for you. Take and drink. The blood of Christ is shed for you. Amen. The blood of Christ is shed for you. Amen. The body and blood of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, Savior, strengthen you this day and give you peace. Let us pray together. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from our tables more than we could ever ask. Strengthen us to love the world with the life you give. In your name we pray. Amen. And our final hymn this morning is Holy God, We Praise Your Name. It's number 414 in the Cranberry Hymnal, and we're singing verses 1, 2, and 4. we own the mystery. It is pure promise and grace, God's love for all of us. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us accompany you now and forever. Amen. A few announcements. Next week at 10 a.m., we won't have Zoom worship. Yay. I, I just, I, you know, it's helpful, but it's nice. We're going to be outside at the Kingo Terrace. So no Zoom worship. The worship service, however, will be recorded. It's a rather large recording. So if you're not able to be at the outdoor worship at 10 a.m. at the Kingo Terrace, probably by about six or seven in the evening, the worship service, which will be recorded, will be on our YouTube um, page. So you can get to that, and we will also put it on the Kingo website. So you should have access to worship, even if you can't get there at 10 a.m. next week. But I do hope to see you. There will be a sign-up. You can sign up, register for worship. And um, just remember, it's going to happen, rain or shine, so kind of, you know, I know in Wisconsin, we dress for the weather, wherever we are, but also remember to bring a chair. Um, the service is a little bit long to stand, that's okay, but uh, we don't have enough chairs. Just a little reminder, speaking of chairs and things at church, the new flooring was supposed to be done by this uh, two days ago on Friday, but there were just a few little setbacks. Imagine that, a, a 
improvement project with some setbacks. Hmm. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, sarcasm again. They uh, hope to be done, I think, by midweek. So um, it, there isn't much to look at, but maybe by next Sunday, we can open up the doors and you can kind of see the new flooring and we'll see if the pews are installed. It's, it's really exciting. And I just want to thank Kathy Stokebrand, who's been very instrumental in doing the research for this project, and Marion Alberton, and let's see, Kathleen Martinson, and am I forgetting someone? This is why I hate naming all the people, because I usually forget someone, and Steve McCormick, too, who has been kind of like the general contractor managing this project. So thank you so much, and thank you to all the gifts that... Um, that make this possible, all of these projects possible. And Kingo Book Club also meets next Sunday, The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, and that'll be through Zoom at 4 p.m. If, if you see reports due and you're thinking, do I have a report due? You know who you are. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. And if you don't know, if you're thinking this is all new to me, don't worry about it. But those reports are due on Saturday. And that's for the annual meeting, which will be through Zoom on June 27th. We're praying and celebrating with those having birthdays. We pray with Lynn and give thanks with Lynn and Jackie and Maud and Justine and Pam. And if we do neglect your birthday, please let me or Brianna know. Were there any other announcements? If you can raise your hand on your screen, you'll go to the top and we'll see that. Okay, I'm going to count to 10 in my head. I don't see any special announcements. Excellent. I think Berea has a post loop for us. Yes, I'm playing Oh God Beyond All Praising. It's in the Cranberry Hymnal number 880. Thank you, Maria. I'm going to have whole music in my head all day now. <laughs> Thank you, Gustav. All right, church, ready? Go out from your homes, feed and serve the world. We are the body of Christ. Amen. If you'd like to stick around for fellowship, we will have that time. If you need to sign off, have a blessed Sunday, everyone, a blessed Sabbath. Amen.